Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the second Sunday of Baba, and the Gospel is from Luke uh, chapter 5. And I'm sure as you probably remember from a few years, that the theme of the Gospel of this month of Baba is about Christ's divinity and His power. And last week, the Gospel was about the healing of the paralytic, so we see that um, Christ has power over sickness. And then this week, we see that Christ has power over nature. And then next week, we're going to see how Christ has power over demons. And then the last Sunday, we'll see how Christ has power over death and when he raises the son of the widow of Nain. In the gospel of today, we see Christ's power over nature. And after a long and grueling night of working and trying to catch fish, Um, the Lord asked Peter to launch out into the deep and let down their nets. And Peter was kind of shocked by this request, and he said, Master, we have toiled all night. We have toiled all night and caught nothing, nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So today I want to talk about how the Lord fills our net, how the Lord fills our net, because the net is sort of like a symbol of our, uh, the net is sort of like a symbol of our life, and just like St. Peter, perhaps we've toiled very hard, and perhaps we've worked all night, and maybe our nets are still empty, Um, and this could be like the result if you're in your life, you're wondering about your purpose, or maybe perhaps you're struggling with like low self-esteem, or perhaps you've tried very hard to live a Christian life and a couple of sins are keeping you um, sort of deflated and they keep, they're keeping your net sort of empty. Many people have a net because we all have to have a net full of something. So if your net isn't full with holy things, sometimes we try to fill our net with unholy things. So sometimes we fill our net with maybe some materialism and we have really busy lives and we're so, so busy. But at the end of the day, when you look at your net, it's actually kind of empty. You feel lonely, you feel distraught. Like I said, you have no purpose. In the Catholic epistle today, St. James, he tells us, you lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and you cannot obtain. You fight in war Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you spend it on your pleasure. All of us, maybe sometimes we're trying to fill that net and we're trying to do certain things and we fill, we fill, we fill, but at the end it's still empty because we're we're filling the net with things that really aren't fulfilling. But have no worries, have no worries. The Lord has the ability to fulfill our nets. And today I want to discuss four things. Four things that are going to help us fill our net. The first thing that can help us fill our net, if you will, is before they went out into the deep, there was something that happened before that. Do you know what happened before they went out? Before they went out into the deep, they had, they heard... A sermon. Our Lord gave them some beautiful words, and but then after they gave them the, those beautiful words, then he told Saint Peter to go out. I think this is like the first step in fulfilling our net is to hear the word of God, to hear the word of God. And the way we can do this now is we have to you you know get into the word of God at our homes in our Bibles, to you know get into the word every day with our Bible to see how God is filling us. If we don't listen to uh, the Word of God, then we're going to be empty. We're going to be empty. That's why I always say a chapter a day keeps the devil away. A chapter a day keeps the devil away. So try to get into your Bible every day to keep you full, to keep you full and to keep you satisfied. You can view your Bible time as sort of like a charge. You know, you plug in your phone every day. No? 
You plug in your phone every day. So view the Bible as a time to plug yourself in and get connected and just get a little jump start to your day by plugging yourself. Because you will need the energy to do the following steps. The first step was to get into the Word of God. The second step to fill your net is to, to launch into the deep. You know, I was, I was thinking about this Bible. I was thinking, I was like, why did they have to go out into the deep? Why didn't he just do the miracle near the seashore? I mean, he could have just said, the whole point of this month is Christ is, you know, almighty, and he, can, he has control over nature. So he could have done the miracle just next to the seashore. But he told them, no, we're going to go out into the deep. And this was sort of a difficult uh, thing for St. Peter to grasp. Why do I need to go out into the deep? We tried so hard the previous night. But our Lord, you know, when he went out to the deep, good things happened. As I read this passage, like, I'm thinking launching into the deep is what requires faith and trust in God. And the deep could be uncharted territory in our life. Maybe it's a new challenge. Maybe it's a new challenge at work, or it's a new class, or it's a new thing that you're trying to do. Maybe it's a new service, or maybe it's a new job or something. And it's going to push you beyond your limit. It's going to push you beyond your comfort zone. And it, or maybe it could be moving to a new place. But the beautiful thing is, no matter how hard or how far that may seem, or how deep and that may be, the Lord is willing to go there with you. The Lord is willing to go there with you, and there He'll do some marvelous things. Sometimes in, when we go far with God, then He, 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 uh, he shows his marvelous, uh, his marvelous, the power of His arm. Launching into the deep is a reminder for us to launch deep into our hearts. I think this is maybe a skill that is... Uh, we need to um, practice a little bit more, is launching into, the, into our hearts to see what is our true intentions. What are our true intentions? What are our motivations? What motivates us? What motivates us? You know, we're all Christian people, but maybe we don't act like true Christians. So then the question should be, what is really motivating us? What is in the depth of our heart? I was thinking about um, like a pool, like our heart is very deep. It's a very like a deep pool in our backyard. But sometimes we let like this pool become full of garbage and other people's garbage. Maybe it could be like grudges or something and we hold grudges against people or we hold envy or bitterness. And then the, the depth of our heart, it once was very deep, but then once we started holding resentment and bitterness and all these things, now actually we've become kind of shallow. We've kind of shallow when we seek superficial relationships and we, we want to remove that garbage. We want to move and go deep down and see where are our roots? What are the things that keep us strong? I think that's one thing or one reason to go or what it means to go into, into the deep. Another uh, way to fill our nets after we hear the word and then go into the deep is the realization of our sins. Notice that after they went into the deep and then our Lord Jesus Christ filled the nets, then St. Peter sort of uh, felt self-conscious. Then he realized, he said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And what's nice is even this happened, like it made Peter feel like something he couldn't stand before the holiness of God. And I think that's a beautiful feeling because then our Lord obviously raises them up and says, no, now, you, now you'll not only be fishers uh, of, you know, fishermen, you're going to be fishers of men. So God appreciates that feeling, but then raises us and says, no, I do trust you. I hope we have that feeling, depart from me from I am a sinful man. Each one of us should say, I am sinful, I am unworthy. But we come here not because, you know, we're worthy, because we're unworthy, and we want to become, like, filled with his grace. Does that make sense? We want to become filled with his grace. So despite our shortcomings, despite our shortcomings, God does incredible things in our lives and fills us 
with more than we need. And that's the fourth thing. So after we hear the word of God, then we launch into the deep. We become self-aware like of our, our conscience. And then the last thing is that when God gives us more than we need, then what did the, the disciples do? Or St. Peter did? He called the other boats. He called the other boats and said, My boat is full now. Come take from the rest. And they filled other boats. So this is a great image of the church. The church, like the apostles were filled, and then they gave to everybody. And another thing that I see in that time was that the boat became so full that even it started to, to sink, right? And then that's when actually St. Peter said, uh, depart from me for, my, for I am a sinful man. But then I was thinking about when did that happen later in St. Peter's life? Didn't that happen when the boat was, when he was starting to sink? And then he cried out. So he had the experience. So all of these things start to give us experience with God so that we know to turn to God in all our, our, our troubles. So we talked about four things. We talked about first getting into the word of God. The second is going into the deep. The third is becoming having the realization of our sins and our need for God. And the fourth is to feed others, to feed others and to use the gifts that God has given us for the glory of his church. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Oh,